Hello. In this video, I am going to show you the various events that can be triggered on the controls. Say I have text box here. The client side events that I can bind to a text box are on focus. So whenever my control focus the text box, it is going to display an alert. So I can call a function here. Like we have click event, client click event for button. For text box, we have on focus event whenever my control focuses the text box. On blur event, whenever the text box loses the focus of the control. And on change event, whenever I write something in the text box and moves out of the text box or loses the focus from the text box. So it is going to generate on change event. So let us see these three events for the text box. So I have a text box here. For this text box, I have binded these three events, client side events. Execute this. This is focus event. Click OK. Now my control is inside the text box. If I click out, that means I am losing the focus from the text box. This is focus out event or you can say on blur event. Say OK. Now I will again click inside the text box, focus, I will write some text and click out. Now here it should trigger a change event, change in the text box. Earlier the text of the text box was empty, now the text is high. Change event. As well as the focus out. So these are the events associated to your text box. Now in the same way I have drop down list or radio button list or checkbox list or list box any list control they will have the same on change event associated to it. So whenever I change the item from the drop down list it is going to trigger this event and call the function whatever we call here. So as of now I am going to display a message in the alert box. Now earlier the item is select, now I am changing the item to 2. So drop down list, change event. Now earlier it is 2, now again I am going to select it 2. It is not going to trigger the event because we haven't changed the item. So event gets triggered whenever item gets changed. Now I'll right click, I'll say view source. So for drop down list, it is going to generate a select tag, select with option. The same thing what we write for our HTML. And on change event, we are writing this script. And ID of this control is same, ct100 underscore so and so then drop down list 1. Now what I want is on this button click I want to validate that the form both the fields are required field. Text box should not be empty. They should select something from the drop down list. So how do I do that? So on client click I am going to call function f1 and in function f1 I can access the value of text box in this way. So I will name it as txt and same way where ddl drop down list value I am going to access it in the same way document dot get element by id paste it now the id is drop down list one here copy this replace txt name and I am going to compare I'm going to write if else. If txt is equals to empty, then alert. Text box cannot be empty. else if it is going to check 
डी डी एल इक्वल्स टू इफ आई डो नॉट सेलेक्ट एनी थिंग डिफॉल्ट सेलेक्टेड वैल्यू इज सेलेक्ट if the default value is select that means they haven't selected anything so i'll say i'll write a message select any option and i'll execute this and let us check whether it is working text box cannot be empty I'll write something in text box. Okay, I have focus event and all these events. Now, now it should not ask me the text box empty. It should ask me drop down list validation. Select any option. Now, form is working perfectly. But if you observe that. client side validation means it should not post back the form it should not post back the form unless and until i fill all the controls now if i click here it is displaying the message saying the text box is empty but it is not stopping me from the post back you see this green bar here i'll say okay you find a green bar so what i want is i want to stop it from making a post back so how do i do that it is very simple i need to write one more line of code for every event if this display an alert and return false that means this function is going to return false if text box is empty and this function is going to return false if drop down list we haven't selected anything in it and if i say return false it is going to stop me from post back i need to write even return here because this function is going to return something so i need to write return f1 now it stops me from making the post back now i am not hitting the server unless and until my form is fully filled now select any option it is not hitting but in our real time what i want is i want it to display all the messages in single pop up right i don't want to have multiple pop ups for each and everything so we can simply build a string here for every case and let us not go for else if ladder let us go for if and let us not say return false here so what is it i'll do i'll simply declare a variable here where m s g message let the message be empty initially if text box is empty i'll simply write msg message plus equals to text box cannot be empty here i'll write msg plus equals to select any option and here i'll write slash n now finally so it will check for each and every control if text box is empty it is adding a message if select uh, drop down list is empty it is adding a message finally after validating all the controls i'll check if 
MSG is not equals to MT then I'll go for alert MSG display the message and return false if my form contains some 20 30 controls so in this way I need to proceed for that I need to check each and every control and append the message if it is empty then finally check the message if message is not empty that means there is some validations required then display the alert return false else it will not display the alert form will get posted now it is going to display both the messages at once text box cannot be empty select any option if I write something in the text box click the button now it is going to display single message select any option so this is how I can validate the form at client side without using any server control without using required field validator I have validated the form now I can go for even ranges I can write if the value of the text box is less than or greater than whatever it may be now if I am reading the value one one last thing I want to show you if I am reading the value from the text box it is a text I need to parse it like we go for in dot parse now I need to parse it to say for example one validation is text box should not be empty and another validation is the value of the text box should be between 100 to 500 the range it should be between 100 to 500 so I have read the value of the text box in txt and here I'll check where let the value be v equals to I have got parse int and parse float like we have int dot parse and float dot parse here we have parse int and parse float so I'll go for parse int whatever the value I have txt now this value gets converted to integer now the value of txt which was a string now it got converted to integer and stored in v now I'll check if value is less than 100 it should validate it or if value is greater than 500 it should validate it and I'll display a message saying that value should be between 100 and 500 that's it I'll execute this I'll write 700 here and I'll click this button it says that value should be between 100 and 500 it is out of range select any option for this out it has stopped me so this is how I can go for range validation as well uh, the last validation which is left out is regular expression validation now I want to write a regular expressions so how to write our regular expressions we will see it in our next video thank you very much